When I was preparing the initial unboxing video of this Steel Dive GMT, well, actually from the moment I placed an order on AliExpress, I was wondering how is this homage compares to the actual Seiko 5 GMT and not on the paper, but in the flesh, kind of close and personal. Well, there is no need to wonder no more. We have both of them here. So let's find out. Hello and welcome back! We talk about watches on this channel and do this type of mostly scientific comparison. So, if this is your thing, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the big red subscribe button over there and hitting that notification bell. I did uncover some interesting details about the steel dive in the few weeks that I actually had it after my initial impression and unboxing video. And I also have an answer from the steel dive team why some colorways of this watch are more expensive than others. And I will of course share those details in this video too. However, if you want to see my detailed review with my initial impressions, and all the specifications of this Steel Dive GMT watch, I will leave a link to that video in the description of this one. Now, this is not exactly a battle of two equals, even though these two watches look so similar to one another. And it is because there is no much point comparing these two at the design level. It is not hard to guess which company has a design department and which has a photocopy machine. However, I will still run a score evaluating the practicality of each watch, because this is where the key differences lie between these two timepieces, in my opinion. And yes, we will compare the prices too. However, irrespective of the score, my conclusion might not be what you would expect. As a matter of fact, there is no particular winner here. Rather, the conclusion that I'm trying to get to is, do you actually need the steel dive if you have Seiko? And if there is any circumstances at all where you would choose one watch over another. So for the sake of saving time, let's get out of the way all the similarities and the dimensions, which coincidentally are very similar to steel dive. We have 41.5 mm diameter. It is about 42 mm if we measure the actual case. Case height is just under 14 mm. Lock to lock is 45.6 mm. However, the distance between the protruding end links is 50 mm. Still okay, but not ideal for slimmer wrists, as we will discuss a bit later in this video. We have 22 mm locks here, and the bracelet tapers down to about 18 mm by the clasp. And on a fully supplied stainless steel bracelet, this watch weighs 181 grams. Now, looking at the Seiko, the bezel diameter is 41.3 mm and case width is 42.5 mm with 22 mm lugs. The case height is 13.8 mm, lug tip to lug tip is 45.6 mm. The Jubilee style bracelet tapers down to 18 mm at the clasp as well. And on a supplied stainless steel bracelet, this watch weighs 162 grams. In both cases, we have quite generous amount of extra length in the bracelet, which will cover just over eight and three quarters of an inch wrist, or just over 22 centimeters in circumference. As we can see, the dimensions are pretty much identical, apart from the weight. There is almost 20 grams difference here. This extra weight is actually distributed more or less equally in the steel dive between the head of the watch and the bracelet. So some of that extra weight went into the solid and quite substantial case back and the crystal, and some into a bit more heftier bracelet links, but mostly into the milled part of the clasp. Yes, Seiko, as usual, only resorted to a pressed clasp here. Okay, what else is the same? Of course, the movement. The movement used in both watches is Seiko NH34 GMT caliber. Okay, Seiko 4R34 in the Seiko watch and its unbranded version designated for use by third party manufacturers NH34 in steel dive. Going further down the list of similarities, of course, the overall design and shape of the iconic cushion case don't look much different. Also, what is kind of surprising is the finishing, and more importantly, the quality of finishing is very similar. And this is not a criticism of Seiko, but rather a compliment to Steel Dive. Okay, there is a small difference if we are to be perfectly pedantic. The direction of the brushing on top of each case. It is longitudinal for Steel Dive and circular on Seiko, but this is only visible at close inspection. Now, let's take a look at the actual differences that matters, and there are a few to say the least. 
Starting with the case, so looking at the back, Sega has a transparent case back, which I actually like. 4R34 movement is definitely not the most decorated movement out there, however, I like the somewhat minimalistic look of the rotor decoration and a very tool-like finishing, or rather, lack of finishing of the movement itself. I think it works with the rest of the watch aesthetics. On the other hand, Steel Dive went with a non-transparent but still decorated case back. I prefer Seiko's option here, it is maybe less practical but looks better. However, there is arguably a reason for Steel Dive to go with a non-transparent back option. That is, a declared 200 meters of water resistance compared to Seiko's 100 meters one. To achieve that level of water tightness, Steel Dive also gave us a screw-down crown, which is one of the major reasons the whole 5KX lineup received such a mixed reception from Seiko fans when it was introduced a few years ago. Having that screw-down crown on Steel Dive just gives us that extra level of confidence that your watch is watertight, even when not doing any kind of extreme water-related activities, like swimming, for example. And yes, Steel Dive's crown is signed too. I like the sterile crown on Seiko. A little detail, but nice to have. And just before we finish with the case, a little detail, but worth mentioning, is Seiko's drilled lugs, which I also prefer, because it does make removing the bracelet spring bars that much easier. Ok, the drill lugs definitely is a good point for Seiko, however, Steel Dive's signed screw-down crown and 200 meters of water resistance definitely makes Steel Dive a clear winner here from a practicality perspective. Crystal and bezel. Ok, here Steel Dive offers us exactly what Seiko decided not to. That is, sapphire crystal and ceramic bezel insert. Seiko only has mineral glass on offer here, which is of course not ideal and doesn't provide the same level of scratch resistance as sapphire. Further, steel dive bezel is loomed, which not only adds to the legibility in the dark, but also somewhat enhances the GMT watch functionality, allowing us to read the bezel time zones in the dark too. When it comes to bezel action, we have very different approaches here as well, with steel dive going with 120 clicks unidirectional bezel, while Seiko with bidirectional friction-only based bezel mechanism. Technically, Seiko's approach is more correct for a GMT watch, however, I do like Steel Dive's approach too. The resistance on both bezels is pretty good, however, I have heard of Seiko bezel being accidentally moved. But I never actually had it happen to me. If you use Seiko on a daily basis, what is your experience with the bezel? Please do let us know in the comments. And just before we tally the score in bezel and crystal categories, I need to mention the date window cyclop. I think Steel Dive went a bit overboard here with the magnification. It is probably one and a half or maybe even two times stronger than on a Seiko. I understand that some people might actually appreciate this, however, I find it a bit distracting and much more prefer a more subtle but still very legible magnification level of Seiko. So, Steel Dive brings to the table sapphire crystal and loomed ceramic bezel bezel insert and if it wasn't for the unidirectional bezel action and overly high cyclop magnification, these two categories would be a clear-cut decision. However, I'm still inclined to give both points to Steel Dive for practicality here. Dial. If the previous categories were on the Steel Dive's side, well, with a dial, Steel Dive definitely cut corners or saved costs or whichever way you want to look at it. Even though the layout is almost identical, we actually have applied our markers on Seiko as well as applied logo versus pretty much all printed dial on Steel Dive. So, this is Seiko that we are also used to. It might not give us a signed crown under 1500 bucks, but they are masters of dial design and implementation at pretty much any price point. Similar story with the handset, we have high polished finish hands here on Seiko, which creates a lovely light bounce. As for the steel dive, the handset is nice from far, however, as we get closer, things don't look as bright. The hands are brushed and the second hand is painted in the Y color, similar to the frames of the hour indices. 
Also, the luminar hour indices has a bit of a greenish hue in a normal light. It is possibly intentional rather than due to the type of lume they used, so I will not treat it as negative. However, I personally prefer the white indices on Seiko. And as a final knockout punch from Seiko in this category, we have this lovely complexity of the multitone deep blue dial background. So, the steel dive dial definitely lacks that finesse that we see on the Seiko. And of course, all printed steel dive hour indices have a hard time competing with Seiko's Lumibrite Loom. Ok, to be fair, Steel Dive's Loom is not slouch at all and will give run for the money to a lot of competition and the Loom on hands and bezel is actually strong. However, this Seiko's Hour Indices Lumibrite is also very good and, in this instance, better than Steel Dive's. So, Seiko's reputation as undisputed king of the dials lives on. In terms of bracelet, we have similar designs and finishing, with Seiko's having slightly wider outer parts of the links. And also, Seiko actually uses single-piece link made look like a five-piece one, while Steel Dive gives us five pieces separate. And this is nice, but it doesn't make a major difference in bracelet comfort on the wrist though. What does give better comfort is the inverted links on the Seiko, especially on the slimmer wrists. However, Steel Dive did curve the male and links quite well down here, so there is no major difference in wrist comfort. Well, not on my about 7-inch wrist anyway. Other than that, both watches have solid links and solid end links, and the clasps are very similar too. Ok, Steel Dive has milled in a part of the clasp and a bit more elaborate branding and two extra holes of micro adjustments. Other than that, the clasp double pusher operation is very similar between the two watches. So, in my personal humble opinion, I think it's a draw here. Now, the last but definitely not the least category is the value. The Steel Dive is available for about 150 to 180 US dollars and Steel Dive did confirm that the orange loom markers on the orange markers bezel cost more to manufacture and therefore make the orange colorway watches more expensive. Now, if we look at Seiko's price, well, it can be easily found for around 400 to 450 dollar mark, which is higher than Steel Dive. However, at the point of making this video, I don't know of any other true GMT mechanical watches with in house movement that sell at such a low price point. So, this Seiko represents an incredible value, and I'm not even talking about other factors that make this particular Seiko so special, like being the first Seiko watch to actually use the 4R34 GMT movement, to name just one. So, this round hands down goes to Seiko. So, what is my verdict? Well, all things considered, I view Steel Dive as a more practical watch between the two. That is, if I was going hiking in the wild, that also involved diving from rocks and now and again required me get in touch with the outside world in different time zones, especially during the night, well, I would pick Steel Dive between these two. However, for normal day-to-day -day use, Seiko with its premium looks and high X factor would definitely be my first choice. So, my personal recommendation is, well, get both. The price difference between the two watches is really not that big at all. And if one can afford a steel dive, which is in reality only about three times cheaper than Seiko, then I would strongly recommend buying Seiko as well. And then use steel dive, where tough ruggedness, good water resistance and great practicality overall is required. And use Seiko everywhere else. So, this is my take on these two watches. What are your thoughts? Have you actually physically handled these two and have a long term experience? Well, if you do, do share with us in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. I really appreciate it and it does help the channel. And as always, thank you for watching, take care and I will see you in the next video.